Published in 1978, Falling Angel was written by William Jortsberg. It is a detective mystery novel that can be described as horror. Alan Parker would later adapt his story in Angel Heart in 1987, where he both wrote and directed his film. What is the book about? Falling Angel is set in 1959, where private detective Harry Angel is hired by one Louis Cipher to investigate the whereabouts of Johnny Favorite. Favorite was a popular crooner in the early 1940s before a wartime injury sent the singer to a private hospital in a vegetative state. However, Favorite is missing, leaving a cold trail for Angel to follow, who must navigate the streets of New York to Coney Island to uncover elusive leads. In his detective work, Angel meets Epiphany Proudfoot, the daughter of Favorite's secret love. Together, they trailblaze the big city through its many sights and avenues. Angel's experiences descend into the bazaar before he discovers he's in the middle of an occult conspiracy. His search for Johnny Favorite becomes a very personal one. Falling Angel starts off as a gumshoe detective story. It has the many tropes you'd expect of a private eye tale set in the Big Apple, going into many and interesting places, meeting different characters, sneaking around, going under false identities, and unraveling a mystery. However, things turn strange and Angel's mystery, as well as his client, are not who they appear to be. What's most interesting, Falling Angel is told in first person, with Harry Angel narrating the entire novel. We get inside his head, know about his background, what he's thinking. His journey becomes ours. Before I get into my review of the novel, if you haven't seen Angel Heart and don't want to hear any spoilers, jump to this time code and you'll be good. What if you're a fan of Angel Heart? If you watched Angel Heart many times and continue to see new things, Falling Angel is a must read. You'll pick up many Easter eggs that are in the film that are homages to the book, whether it will be the characters, things, and even lines of dialogue that seem to be too clever. Alan Parker did a fantastic job taking the characters, places, and events to make his own story out of the source material. For fans of the film, you can think of the novel as inspiration for many of the ideas. While we can debate whether or not things in the book unseen in the film are canonical, we get a deeper understanding of many backstories. Examples are how Harry started his agency, more detail about his injuries from the war, and how Dr. Fowler spent his bribe money. The biggest change, of course, is moving the scenery out of New York into New Orleans. True, Angel Heart does show a good deal of New York, with Harlem, the bars, restaurants, even an abbreviated tour of Coney Island. However, it isn't as emphasized as in the novel. Georgeburg wanted the reader to explore the high and low lights of New York City, 1959, from the skyscrapers to the seedy flea circus magic shows. In my opinion, he wanted to surprise the reader with the occult where you didn't see it coming. Parker took another direction and moved the story into New Orleans, where the occult, voodoo for example, and the city come together in a well-established trope whether it's cartoons, movies, or theme parks, and the many gift shops help too. Angel Heart prepares the audience to expect a different kind of city with its different practitioners of various spiritual beliefs. Unlike the novel, where Angel is a New Yorker encountering things very off for New York, Harry Angel of the film is a fish out of water. He's the one that's out of place, seeing things that are just quite ordinary for 1955 New Orleans through the eyes of someone born in England, at least. Alan Parker told the story efficiently while adding his own direction, whether it's with character changes or how he depicts Harry's dreams. However, conversely, there's a lot of backstory and character nuances that are ignored or given ambiguous references. They don't change the tone or make the movie less dense. With visual media, the film didn't need the verbosity or background exposition. In some ways, it very conveniently and deliberately overlooks a couple details just to get us further immersed into the story. In my opinion, this is one of the very few examples where the movie is better than the written material. What if you're not a fan of Angel Heart? If you didn't think Angel Heart was good or entertaining, there's little I can say to recommend the novel. Maybe you're interested in a gumshoe detective story set in a big city and want to read The Unexpected. In some ways, the characters in the book are more bizarre, as well as Angel's experiences. If you are into reading backstories and personal history more than the mystery itself, then you might enjoy it. 
I can say that if you wanted to see or know more about Louis Cipher, as depicted by Robert De Niro, then the novel will give you that. The Angel Heart Cipher is more of an abbreviation or derivative than what we read in the book. To De Niro's credit, he only needed a handful of scenes to bring the tone of the literary example. If you found certain elements of the 1987 film objectionable, don't look to the book for comfort. All the ugly tones and sensuality is in the novel. The book, like the film, wants us to feel uneasy and uncomfortable, maybe just a little bit filthy. It's a story about getting a taste of hell, not a smooth float on the Bayou Delta. Before we continue, like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this video and want to see more content like this one. Your support is so very appreciated. What if you never watched Angel Heart? What we have with Falling Angel, for those unfamiliar with the film, is a period piece story set in the late 1950s, with many passing references to the decade before it. Because it's told in first person, we don't really get a history lesson or a trip through nostalgic New York City. It's more superficial as we're more into what Angel is thinking more than where Angel is, and turns more of a horror novella with very unusual and surreal experiences. You don't need to be intimately knowledgeable or aware of the 1950s. I'm certainly not. But it does help the reading experience if you appreciate the different era and accept a time where being a crooner could make you larger than Sinatra. Speaking of a different era, are you easily offended? Do printed words trigger you? If you are, and made a habit of showing how angry you are on social media, Falling Angel is not for you. There's no shortage of bad words, intolerance, and offending scenes. The novel is fiction, written in 1978, and I don't think William Georgeberg cared about your sensitivities. The book is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable and unsettling. It's not a story about kumbaya, where we all give each other a hug. It's about a detective searching for someone's past, but sees the hell of the present. The novel is pretty short. I got through it in two or three nights, and it was free with Kindle. It's not too much of an investment if you want to read a novel that was later adapted into a film. In hindsight, had I read the book first, I would be extremely curious how they could adapt the story in tone. However, it was done, and I think done well. While the novel is not a classic, it's a book where you can see cinema inside your head. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about Falling Angel written by William Georgeberg. This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, getting invited to lunch by an attorney makes a good story. Better if it's not yours. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.